Welcome back. So this lesson we're going to try and uh, populate information inside the list box. So I've just selected the list box here and the first thing I want to do is actually give it a name because I want to be able to find it inside my code. So the cool thing is when you select a list box or any property here, uh, sorry, any um, UI component, you'll get the properties here. The top one will always be the name because they just know that's what you need, right? So I'll write list, LST for list, and then I'll write persons. So that's just a way for me to reference this is the list of the persons. So I'll save that and right when I do it you'll notice that down here it pops up um, with the name of the list box now. So now I can actually reference that inside my code. While I'm here let me just try and show you another way. I'll select the button here and now it selects the properties for the button so you don't have to find it in the UI if you can find it in the XML, XAML code. So here I'll call it BTN for button and I'll say add person just to give it a good name for the button. So now Again, right away it pops up here with a button name. So now I can also reference that from my code. But what code are we talking about? We need to go behind to find the behind, the code behind. So what I do is I open, here's the list of things. Let me just zoom again. Here's the list of files available in the person manager right now. The Windows XSAML is the one that you're looking at right here. That's the designer. And if you expand that, there's one called .cs in the end. If you double click that, that's actually the code behind. Um, so let's just look at this. I'll scroll down a bit and I just added a comment here because it's very important you do not start writing like here starting to use your list before it's actually initialized. So if I do this and I say name equals da 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 or whatever I want to do it will actually give me a null point exception because the list is not initialized yet until the initialized components is actually run. So let's go into the initialized components just to show you very quickly what it is. I jump in here by F12ing, and this is something that Microsoft actually don't want you to touch. It's something auto-generated code, don't worry about it, but this is kind of where it loads and initializes all your components. Like, if you scroll down, there's probably a place here, this list persons equal new, blah, 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 blah. So this is where we create everything in our XAML application. Let's shut that down again, because it's not that important to us. It's not something we want to change. It's just important for you to know, don't start changing your components until after this uh, initialized components has been run. But what I want to do is I want to get my person manager and my DLL facade in here. And how do you do that? Just like with the console application, we need to add a reference. So we'll right click references, add reference. We'll select the data logic layer because that's where our data logic layer facade is available and our person manager. I'll say okay. And now I can actually here in the top create a new I person manager. There we go. Um, and I'll call him PM equals, and then I'll say new data logic facade dot get person manager. So now I have my person manager available. So that means that now I can actually to my list add a list of all the persons just like we did in the console application, printing them out. But now we want to present them in a list instead. So what I'll do is I'll find the list of persons, LST persons dot, and then there's something called item source. Let me show you in a second how I know to do this. In the item source, I can write PM for person manager dot get persons. And now I've actually populated my list. But how did I know to call item source? Well, luckily we have this tutorials, uh, VPF tutorial, and they also have a list on how to use list box control. So I click this link, and here there's a lot of cool information about how to use the list box. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Uh, look at this. First, it explains how you'll just make a basic hard-coded list item. It's like this. Then they explain a bit about how you can make it a bit more funky with colors. Pretty awesome stuff. So you can actually go in and customize each line, just like you would be able to in HTML documents with CSS. They also made it available here. Okay, we don't want to do that now. Then there's about data binding. How do we actually bind information to the list? That's what we want. So there's a lot of how you can use the data table still. We don't want to do that, but here it actually explains we have a list of items, in this case it's to-do item, in our case it's persons, tomato, tomato, doesn't matter. So you just say list, and they call it lb.todo list, maybe we should have used the same naming convention, up to you, dot item source, equal items. And of course Microsoft have a huge amount of documentation on this as well, and that's all I, I kind of read, the explanation is in here, and then let's run it and see if it actually works. We're not going to get something as shiny as this, we're just going to get a very, very basic uh, two string for each line, just explaining uh, each piece. 
Let's run it, see if we actually got what we expect, and let's wrap up the lesson. Here we have the list box now, and we can actually select these two, nothing really fancy happening, but we can see that the two users are actually available. So next lesson, we'll try to add some kind of selection so we can see the different selections. See you in the next lesson.